Hey everybody, it's Derek Kalmartin from CodeOpinion.com. Why is clean architecture so popular? You've probably noticed there are a ton of blogs and videos that try to explain it, that definitely show you how to use it. But why is it so popular? And should it be? I'm going to live up to my Code Opinion name and provide some thoughts on why I think it's popular, the problems that it does address, and some aspects that almost nobody is talking about. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So as a quick primer, what is clean architecture? And the biggest takeaway, I'm getting right to the point here, is that you have dependencies pointing inwards. And I'm gonna explain why, and that's really the crux of the whole thing. So we have this outer layer, let's say it's UI, database, external interfaces, web. We have this inner ring, which has controllers potentially. We have use cases, and at the very core, we have entities. And again, the main crux of this is that dependencies are pointing inward. So as an example, in a web application, let's say your top level is your web framework, or you have an HTTP API, and that's gonna depend on your infrastructure that kind of layer, that particular project. Now, the thing is, infrastructure may have things like, say, data access or external APIs that you interact with. An infrastructure is then gonna have a dependency on the application. The application is where you're basically invoking uh, different parts of your code that's gonna be leveraging likely things in infrastructure. For example, to get data access and to, to get data from your database. From there, the application is gonna depend on the domain. And this is where things like your business logic and those types of rules are gonna live. But again, this is all about direction of dependencies. You can see how the top layer is referencing lower layers. For example, the web UI could reference the application layer, and that's totally fine. But we're never gonna have any type of reverse where the domain is gonna reference anything or the application is gonna reference infrastructure UI. It will only reference anything below it. Okay, we get it. Clean architecture, direction and dependencies. Why is it so popular? I think it's so popular with people because people are tired of creating or working in a system that's a hot mess, that's a straight turd pile, that it's really hard to change because everything is so highly coupled. And that's what we're gonna to get to here, is that if you have a system that has a lot of coupling, it's hard to make a change in one spot without affecting something else. And that's what clean architecture addresses. Instead of having your web framework, your database access, your business logic and state changes all mixed together like hot mess of spaghetti, rather you're separating these things by technical concern. That means that lower level, that core, that is your domain, it doesn't depend on anything. It doesn't care about data access. It can focus specifically on business logic. Again, we're separating by technical concern. So if you've worked in a system that's hard to change, that has a lot of mixed responsibilities, you're probably cheering, yes, that's why clean architecture is awesome. Now there's three main issues I have though. The first is people being very prescriptive and not taking their, con their context at all into consideration. The second is not understanding the root of why that direction of dependencies exists. It's about coupling and understanding afferent and efferent coupling, which I'll get into. And lastly, you can't have coupling without talking about cohesion. Why is nobody talking about cohesion? Why are we so fixated on uh, organizing and breaking things up by technical concern? Now first, let's talk about being prescriptive and why I lose my mind because of this is that you have a lot of blogs, tutorials, I get it, that illustrate using clean architecture, but they're doing it with a to-do app. If you're writing a to-do app, that's something very simplistic, you do not need clean architecture. And as I start describing coupling, you'll understand why. So yes, it, when you read these tutorials, you read explanations of why it exists, get more into the root of why it actually exists into where you should use it. It's not a formula that you use it and everything's gonna turn out great. It won't. Why I say context matters is because what type of system are you building? In my opinion, if you're building something that's a large, it's a big, large system, the organization and how you do this and try to deal with coupling is far greater than if you're creating a small little to-do app. 
If you're creating a to-do app, you don't need to go down this road. If anything, it's gonna make things more complex. So it's understanding where you're trying to manage coupling and cohesion, um, and then applying that accordingly and deciding then a clean architecture makes sense. The complexity and the size of your app matters. So why we're talking about direction dependencies is because we're trying to manage coupling between these technical concerns. So what is coupling? It's the degree of interdependence between software modules, boundaries, functions, etc. And there are different forms of coupling. So the first is efferent coupling. And the way I like to describe this is who do you depend on? So if our perspective is kind of the web UI, who do we depend on? Well, we depend on the infrastructure and the application. If we're thinking of our perspective as the infrastructure, we depend on the application. And if we're thinking about the application, we depend on the domain. And the domain, we depend on nobody. So why does effort coupling matter? Well, if you think about the domain and why it's in the middle, is because it doesn't depend on anybody. And this relates to changes. If there are changes in any other part or any other layer of the app, the domain's unaffected. We don't have to make code changes there. On the flip side, if we think about the web UI, if anything changes with the infrastructure or the application, we're gonna have, that's breaking in some way in terms of API surface or however something's working, we're gonna have to change them. We're gonna have to make changes in the web UI. So the second aspect of coupling to talk about is afferent coupling, which is kind of the reverse. The way I like to describe it is who depends on you. So the perspective of the web UI, who depends on the web UI? Nothing. There's no layers of part of the app that depend on it. And the infrastructure side, what depends on the infrastructure? Well, it's the web UI. If we now take our aspect of thinking about the application, we have the web UI and the infrastructure that depend on it. And then keep going down now in terms of focusing on the domain, what depends on it? Well, it's the application. It's about stability and understanding where you're making changes and what other layers it might affect. So if we change something within the domain, it could affect the application. If we have some API changes, we're gonna have to make some changes in the application. But that core of the domain, it depends on nothing. The, all where our business logic lives, it's free of dealing with any other aspect of our app. It's isolated. So if there's any other changes, our domain's unaffected. So now we've talked about coupling, direction dependencies, we understand how that works in terms of stability, all makes sense. Here's my question. Why is the primary driver and the primary thing we're thinking about it's organizing code by technical concern. We're concerned about coupling between technical layers. Why is that the primary driver? What happened to cohesion? Cohesion is about understanding your system and taking the capabilities and functionality and the data behind it and putting those things that are related together. So let me jump back a little bit. When I was talking about being prescriptive and context matters, is what is your system doing? Is it have a ton of capabilities? Is it a very large system? Or is it something very focused and narrow that only has a very limited set of capabilities? If you have a small app that's primarily driven by CRUD and mainly it just has kind of trivial validation logic and you don't really have any business logic, then why are you creating a domain layer? You're really just gonna have a domain layer that's pretend domain layer. It's really just the data model. Why not mix and match that data access with uh, your setters to set your properties of your states that you can save it in your database. Oh no, because that's mixing concerns. If you only have five routes, you do not need a layer for data access in case you're going to change the underlying data access. You only have five places to go change it. You don't need to create a separate layer. The point of the layer is to manage coupling. If you don't have that much coupling, why are you going through this? That means we can manage coupling by narrowing our focus, cohesion. So if we think about cohesion and we're grouping related functionality together, that means that we can start segregating and decide by those logical boundaries what we want to do, how we want to implement, if we want to do clean architecture there. So that means that if we have a very large system that has a ton of functionality, it's very likely that not all of it is related to each other. It's starting to carve off these logical boundaries of these related capabilities and focus on those. From there, you can decide per logical boundary, maybe you wanna do clean architecture because there is enough functionality that you do wanna separate these concerns. Maybe you have one particular boundary that you know what, it just is simply CRUD and we can just use transaction scripts. We don't need all these layers. We don't really have a domain. 
So why is clean architecture popular? I really do think it's because people are just tired of working on systems that are kind of a hot mess, that they're really hard to change because there's mixed concerns of say data access and business logic all over the place. But context matters. You need to understand your context as well as understanding the problem that clean architecture solves and separating by technical concern and isolating that domain. If you don't have any type of business logic and you really just have CRUD and data models, then you don't need clean architecture. If you don't have a lot of coupling because you have a small app, you do not need clean architecture. I often get comments on YouTube where people say, this goes too far, where there's so many different layers where somebody says, I have to open 10 different files to make a relatively trivial change. And that's because there's a ton of layers that add absolutely no value, that's just pure indirection for no good reason. And if you have a large system, be thinking about cohesion and defining logical boundaries and being able then to make localized decisions per logical boundary. Maybe in some places just crud, fine. You don't need clean architecture. Maybe a core part of your system has a ton of business logic, has a decent set of capabilities, and yes, you do want to use clean architecture. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to chat with other software developers about software architecture and design, make sure to join my channel where you can get access to a private Discord server. To join, check the links in the description. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.